Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. This is Friday, June 18th. This is floss tube number 77. Uh, this is a channel about stitching and uh, me who has Medusa hair today. So there you go. I don't know what it's doing. I tried to curl it a little bit to make it look a little better and I think it made it worse. So it is what it is today. I'm gonna do things backwards. Um, I had a, we had a lot of comments and questions, so, but I also have a lot of stitching and I did FFO and I did some FFOs. And so I'm gonna switch things around and we're gonna go through stitching first and then I'll do comments and questions. Um, that way, if you only have limited time, I know some of y'all try to watch at lunch. And so if you only have a little bit of time, then you can still get it get to see the stitching and stuff and y'all let me know if you like it or not if i should do it that way all the time i'm trying to get this thing i don't know what this camera's doing mm. oh y'all lord have merciful goodness i need to leave things alone obviously very obviously we like to have it we nearly had an incident now i don't know what this thing is doing i don't know that's weird now the light's weird this is weird the light's weird everything is weird Gracious. I'm going to try not to touch things and just go. Holy moly. Whew. Well, that worked me up. Yike. But I hope y'all had a good week. Um, it's been pretty hot here, especially with the, the heat index is like crazy up. So but I know that the Midwest and y'all out further west in Arizona, um, I know y'all are roasting too and having a drought. So we are not drought right now, thank goodness for that. But I know y'all are so sending all the good thoughts out that way. I'm not used to starting at whips and stuff. So this has got me all, all weirded. But I still feel like it's really dark in here. But anyway, we're just going to go with it. Okay. And I turn things this way, so now I'll be turning to look in the wrong way all the time. I did that. Yes, that's not a good idea. Let's see here. Let's see if I can move these this way. And then we'll go back the other way. This may work better. Y'all see what happens when I try to change anything. And y'all know I don't edit, so here we go. And I'm crooked. And I can't stop from touching things. I did have a new start this week. I enjoyed stitching on um, the 36 count to finish this little guy. I had a lot of fun with him. I didn't think I would, um, I didn't think I could stitch on the 36 count and see it, but I didn't have a problem at all. And I really enjoyed stitching on it. It was super nice. And so I decided to grab out something else I knew that called for 36 count. And I did get to not see very much floss tube this week, but I did see part of Brenda and Laura um, when she's showing all the needle books. They were so beautiful. I was just drooling. So I decided to start this guy here. It is, um, it says it's a housewife, you know, who's, whatever you say that word, that right there. We're literally dwells. And it is beautiful. It's by Heartstring Samplery, where Liberty dwells. And it's supposed to be on 36 count Old Mill Java. And I thought, you know what? I wanna try it and see. I've also never made a needle book thing. So, and I, I didn't put anything on boards today. So we're just, we're rolling with it. I'm trying to get done so I can get my walk in before it's any roastier. I don't know if I will make it or not. And I need to take mama to get her, um, get a pedicure before we go to her uh, brother and sister's birthday tomorrow, so. But I got the little shield. So the little shield there in the center is here. And I'm just using the called for um, DMCs that I used, um, I showed y'all the other day I did on my Creative Keepsakes thing here. I did, you know, I did that last week on there. We'll talk about that again in a minute. But I'm also, I did pull though, my a wicked stepmother blue bayou i wanted it it's a little bit lighter on here i'm gonna do my flowers these tulips i'm gonna do them in my wicked stepmother blue bayou 
to just, um, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like I wanted something a little lighter on here and I wanted the shield to stand out from everything else. So I feel like if I do the shield in the dark blue and then the flowers in this, in this lighter blue, that that will, the shield will still take the center stage. I want the shield to be the first thing you notice. And so I feel like if I bump these flowers back a little bit, just a little bit in the color, that um, the shield will really take precedence right there in the center. So that was my new start this week. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, stitching on that 36 count that I didn't think I would be able to see. So that was crazy fun. So that uh, I did that, I think I started that Friday night maybe. I didn't get, every, most everything got a little bit of love, but not a lot because then I also did FFOing Friday afternoon and so all the things. This guy is coming along crazy fun and he is my Well, I thought I had all this right where I could pick it up, but evidently I don't. My Bittersweet Season by um, Heartstrings. It's an older pattern. I love it. Um, I first saw it on Lisa Kindred Stitcher's Floss 2. It used to be in the background back there behind her. These are just the called for colors. This is what it called for. Um, I wish my Burnt Orange and my 922 weren't quite so close together. If I had to change anything, I would probably change this color a little bit. I'm not sure what I would do with it, but when they're right beside one another, um, you can see, and I got to the bottom of the pumpkin. So that was super fun. So now it doesn't look like a carrot because it did look like a carrot. <laughs> But it looks like a pumpkin now. Um, I haven't added my specialty stitches in, but you can see on that bottom one, the sparkly threads there. And I wish my little guy here wasn't as sparse at the top. He is not as thick as I wish he was. Um, our friend Wendy says she's been to get a good coverage with DMC. She's been doing one strand of DMC 310 and then one strand of silky black. And that's given her a real good coverage. So I'm gonna try that on something, but I think I'll probably just go in and add an extra leg over the top of some of these stitches and see if I can thicken them up. I don't know, I may just leave him kind of mangy looking, this little mangy cat, but we'll see. I love a mange cat anyway, so I don't know. But that is by Heartstrings. That is Bittersweet Season. And I did get to the bottom of the pumpkin. I also had started across this row here. That's the top of the little base. But then I realized I was doing it in the wrong color. So I only had about 10 stitches, but I pulled it out. And, um, you know, it's not me. It's the piece that I'm working on. So whenever it acts bad, it just has to go to the timeout. So... It didn't get any more work on it because it was being naughty. Y'all, I don't know. I have no explanation for what's going on with this hair today. Last week, it was so nice, and this week, it is just cuckoo ca -choo. I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy hair today. I wanted to get, I had dreams of finishing my Summer Jubilee by Blackbird. It is also the one that's in the Souvenirs of Summer, this is the uh, Just Cross Stitch, August 2003, that it's in also. But it's in the Souvenirs of Summer magazine. And I nearly got my flag completely done. And of course, wait a minute. so here we go. This is on Ancient, 28 Count Ancient. If I picture this plus, it is a beautiful piece of fabric. And you see, I don't, I needed that corner gauge y'all sent me, but I didn't use it on here. But it is gorgeous. I nearly got my flag completely finished. 
and then there's two flowers and the one, two, threes, and that's it. So it's getting really close. Um, I guess flag day was a little unrealistic since it was two days <laughs> from when we looked at it last time, but I'm gonna love finish. Oh, and a butterfly. There's another butterfly, but it is so pretty. I did change all the colors up because I was doing mine on this fabric instead of the gray fabric. But it's so cute. This design is gorgeous. And I've got, I've got Wicked Stepmothers and Classic Color Works are what I'm using. I think I may have one. Oh, I've got one Week Style Works in there. But there's my colors that I'm using for it. The red is in there, but it keeps hiding. But I, here again, I want the flag to be like the focal point of it. So I'm having so much fun stitching on that guy. And oh, my hair's falling out. This, I also contemplated filling these in. I contemplated filling, making the this darker and then filling this in with lighter. So it would look like, y'all remember those, um, it's like a banded vase. But I remember my granny having them, having like two, I think. And so it bubbles out. The glass bubbles out itself and makes a little, like a scallop out. But I thought about changing that and going that way. And then I decided, no, I would just leave it and stitch it like it is. Also need to put my eyelets in here. And um, there's some eyelets on this one. And I think somewhere right out here, there's a few eyelets. And I have two satin leaves. I usually wait and try to wait, make myself wait, even though I love doing them. So it's hard. I try to make myself wait and do specialty stitches at the end. That way they don't get like wrinkled up or messed up or anything. But that piece has had, so it's been so much fun. This one is Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Liz Matthews. It's so pretty. These pumpkins are so pretty. And the color is so pretty. And I'm trying to be a better stitcher header. And I, because I didn't get this done last year because I didn't start stitching it till it was close to, I didn't order the stuff till it was close to fall. And that made me sad. And so then um, I'm bound and determined to do better. So you see, I've got what, two Halloween pieces and two, two Halloween pieces and two patriotic pieces going. So um, when I finish these Halloweens or these, when I finish patriotics, I will probably or the Halloween one, I'll probably stick a, like a Christmas one in there or something. So, but these are the, this, I'm just, I pulled the call for colors for it. And my thread can never be beautiful. Like Nicole's always look like they're, like she brushed their hair before she started. But mine don't look that way ever. But these colors are like so yummy. And this is just on a piece of 32 count dirty linen. And this is that tiger's blood, tiger's, is it tiger's blood or tiger's eye? Let me see. Tiger, ah, tiger's eye. But it is so pretty, that thread is Tiger's Eye by, Tiger's Eye by Weeks Dye Works. But look at that color. It is just beautiful. This is another one that's hard for me because of all the diagonals. Y'all know I suffer with counting on my diagonals. I just do. I don't know why. It's different for my brain than counting down or side to side, but it is. And my brain struggles with the diagonal counting. So 
Um, this one will be hard for me because all the diagonals in it. And Dina, um, you had asked me about one of my diagonal stitches that I'm struggling with. I want to get to you on that. This thing is just pretty. It's going to be so pretty. I'm so excited about stitching it and stitching on it. That's just a piece of uh, 32 count dirty linen that I had in my stash. I think it came from Michael's. I think it's just the one they sell in the little, like it's folded up. I don't think it's in a roll. It might've been in a roll, but it's just hanging in the Michaels. Um, and so it's just, it's not expensive or fancy or anything like that. It's just real inexpensive, plain linen. Then I worked on, I worked wrong on, get that, on my Heartstrings Noah and Co. I know um, a couple of y'all are looking for this. If y'all will make sure my brain keeps working um, before I pass it on, I'll just share it since it's not available anywhere. We'll just, you know, go from one to the other or something. Um, I've got a note in here about which one of y'all asked. Make sure I see some of your name and I'll remember. And then when it's done, I'll say, hey, so-and-so sending it back, you know, like this, if we can't get these reprinted because this is, this is all there is. And it is the prettiest design. It's gorgeous. So pretty. And I'm just, I changed the colors up. I just pulled my own. Some are DMC. Um, a lot are my Wicked Stepmothers. I guess this one is all DMC and my Wicked Stepmothers. And you can see it's a naughty mess. But it is coming right along. I decided, you know, I told you I goofed up and I must have used the wrong piece of the two. When I cut this piece off, I must have used the wrong piece. Go me. So I had to push my heart up to try to take out some of the length and make it shorter. So I pushed my heart up this way and then I may, I don't think I took a row out here. And then that will um, enable me to push the waves right up to the bottom here. And so that's gonna save me several rows. And I think that'll enable me to get it all squooshed in that way. But I'm having so much fun on this stitch. I got this, um, I finished this boat and did the life preserver and I got this done inside here. And as you can see, I grabbed the wrong green. So I did not realize it. I don't know how I did it. I must have had a stray piece of green or that is a green from up here, but that looks so much lighter. I don't know how I did it, but so I decided just to blend around it with this other darker one. I'll do a blended needle around it and then just work it back the other way. And that's going to be fine for me, but I love it. I love the heart. I love all these fun colors. This has just been a joy to work on. I have loved every minute of this stitch. I just can't tell you how much fun I've had with it. I will do the, the little, I think by pushing it up, I can get the little anchor in because I didn't want to not have my anchor. And then I will, I think in back stitch right on the lifeboats, um, like SS Noah or Noah, something like this. I'll try to work that in on the lifeboats since I needed to push the heart up. I couldn't have the SS Noah on there. So I'll have to either back stitch it somewhere smaller up here or something or on the lifeboats one, but I'll make it work. But it is gorgeous. This design is just so beautiful. I wish it would, I wish it would get re-released so everybody could stitch it. It's so pretty. And my clock is dinging slow, but I went over there to wind it and the arm was across it. So 
it's gonna have to just ding slow for a few minutes. And I hope I can upload this because I have no internet for some reason, none. None at all, not a drop. I don't know. Where did it go? Where does it go when it goes away? I don't know, because I don't understand where it is to begin with. Then I worked on Jesse Watson. Um, since I'm changing up all the colors on Jesse Watson, this is where my this is where um, I get in a hang up. And I'll think, what color do I want to do for that? So this slows me down on Jesse Watson a little bit. But this is the um, Autism Awareness Sal. It's going on all year. It's with Barbara, who is Raspberry Stitcher, um, on YouTube and on. Facebook, no, not Facebook, Instagram, nothing wrong with me. Jesse Watson, it's a Hands Across the Sea. I did the download of it. It comes with fabulous instructions and directions and it is beautiful. This is the tag for the Sal, if you wanna join the Sal, Jesse Watson Autism Sal. And that's my horrible serial killer handwriting. So we, um, Barbara started this and we have all been stitching along. She's very good about, she, as you can see, she divided it all up where you can stay on target first month, second month, third month, like this. Of course you can stitch ahead or whatever, but I thought that was a super smart idea. That way I didn't end up having to stitch on my border at one time. I know a lot of y'all do that, but that, I don't like stitching the border. It, I don't know why, but it is not fun for me. So here is Jesse Watson. I did this row across here, across the bottom, and then I've been working on catching up on my side borders. So I've got to get my side borders caught up and I'm just picking the colors as I go. I've got what I think will be most of the colors I need. I don't know that I'll have to add in very many more from here. I think I tried to get a good amount, but I think there are a couple of DMCs, one classic color works, and then my A Wicked Stepmothers. And they are so pretty. I'm having a lot of fun with this one, and it is um, real straightforward. I don't, the only thing if you wanted to stitch it on Ada, the only thing that catches my mind right off is you're gonna have to, these eyelets here and this eyelet heart, you would have to change to Smyrna's, but you could do Smyrna crosses for those instead of the eyelets and you could easily stitch this on Ada and it would be gorgeous. So if you've been holding back because you didn't want to, because you're an Ada stitcher and you didn't want to not get to do those parts. You can do smearing across. Is anywhere there's an eyelet, just do a smearing across and it will be gorgeous. I think the same would be beautiful on Ada. So if that's all that's holding you up, don't let it. Um, it's for autism awareness, like I said. Um, we need to talk about these things. We need to quit whispering about things like any, any type of, I don't know, neuroatypical, um, any type of mental health issue, any type of health issue. The more we talk about things and the more we learn from each other and learn coping mechanisms and learn um, just empathy, if nothing else, I think it normalizes things. I think it uh, brings things to light. Um, today, well, on Tuesday, actually, um, President Biden signed in the Juneteenth being a federal holiday. I did not realize until recently that it was, I don't know why, because I knew what it was, but I don't know why it didn't occur to me that it wasn't celebrated everywhere. Um, it's always been a thing here. Um, let me see, I wrote down the date. 1865. So on June 19th, 1865, military orders made it, um, with a military company to Galveston and the slaves there found out that, that they were declared free. So it took 
that long. That was the last to get it all the way across. It took that long, two years, two years after uh, slavery was declared illegal. It took that long for it to get to Gaveston. And so on that day in Gaveston, June 19th, and it's shortened to Juneteenth. It's always been called that here. There's always been Juneteenth celebrations. It just never occurred to me that it wasn't celebrated everywhere. My aunt, uncle, that's their birthday. And um, there is a little lady for years now. Uh, she is so cute. If y'all can look her up. She's Miss Opal Lee in Fort Worth, Texas. And she has been um, marching and walking for years trying to get this recognized as holiday. And um, it, I'm about to tear up. Woo! It finally made it this year and she made it. And um, I think it's huge. And I think it's a huge thing. If you look it up online, Gaveston has a beautiful big mural painted and it is beautiful. So for everybody celebrating tomorrow, enjoy, enjoy your Juneteenth. And everybody who's never heard of it, please go look it up. Um, it's a sad and beautiful and horrible thing. Um, sad that it took that long, sad that we're still struggling, but it is a beautiful thing that people just kept pressing through, kept pressing on, and it's finally been recognized, and I think that's huge. And so everybody, enjoy tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't matter what day of the week it's always been on here. Um, families would gather and have dinners, churches would have celebrations and things, and so it's always been a part of the black communities around here. And I just assumed it was everywhere in my ignorance. But that's just like the autism style. We have got to, the only way to step away from our ignorance is to open up and say, hey, I didn't know, I don't know. Can you tell me? Is there a place I can read about everything? Um, so I just, I wanna shout that out this morning. Congratulations, Miss Opal Lee. Y'all, she's the cutest thing. She is the cutest thing and she's been walking all these years, I think she's 80, 89, 80, I, I can't even remember now. I'm, but she has, and not just Miss Opal but around here, she's kind of, um, cause Fort Worth is about 30, 40 miles from me here. And um, so she has been on the news and stuff around here. And so I'm so happy about her and, um, and things finally get in recognized and talked about because I think that's what has to happen. And um, like I said, I hope everybody, I hope we can all just try to learn and talk about things and get on down the road a little smarter than we got up this morning every day. So now on to FFOs. I did Friday afternoon, Friday I wanted to do more, but I only got four done, but one of them was extensive. I'll start with the smallest one, and it was so cute. It is, um, I don't know if y'all remember me stitching it on a scrap of 28 count, this little guy here. And I ordered this little thing, is what it says you use, Jim, the Jim Holtz ideology, and it just says pocket watch. And it has a little template and everything. I ordered it off of Amazon. And then a lot of y'all told me that they have them at Joann's. I didn't know that. Um, I don't. I don't go in the bead part a lot unless I just need to buy beads. I used to do a lot of beading and do fancy uh, beading necklaces and stuff. I've done several for Micah uh, to go with her prom dresses and things. But since I don't have anybody to do them for anymore, I just don't. So I don't go down that aisle. So um, you may can find them at Joann's. I ordered it off of Amazon. It was a super quick little stitch and it is so dang cute. Now, of course, I'll have to go on the bead aisle because I need a, um, I need some like little chunkier beads, some chunky jet beads, like jet black beads to go. And yes, I will wear it. I will wear this guy and I love him. He's so cute. And he made me super happy and he just pops right in. I don't know if I can get him back out. Hmm. Well. Maybe not. 
Of course, I've had it open a million times, and now when I want it to come open, it won't. But the, you just, I put him on sticky board with no padding, and the edges were frayed looking. They were. That's why I thought I could open it up and show y'all, but I can't. But holy moly. Oh, well. But the edges are frayed where I just trimmed around the sticky board and put him in here. And yes, I have found something that cuts through the sticky board or the mat board or whatever you use very well. I'll show those in a second because uh, one of y'all had to ask about them. And they were like charm. And before that, I could never get them to cut. So that was my first FFO. I also saw this and grabbed it in Michael's. So this is one they have at Michael's and it just opens up. So you would just put your little sticky in there and then just close it up like this. This one, you may have to watch because you won't be able to hide the edge as much as you can in the other one. So you may have to trim it a little better or you may have to fold your fabric to the back and actually make it like a, just like you would a top of a drum, circle it up on the back and put it in here. This one uh, is really recessed, and so this one you may need to do like that, but you have you have space here and here to do that if you need to. So I'll play with that one and see how that one goes in there, but I did see that and like it. So that was my first FFO, was Nevermore by Lizzie Kate. Um, these are, I'm sure it's probably on one, two, three stitch now. They bought all Lizzie Kate designs. So you can probably get this if your LNS doesn't have it from back in the day when it was um, available straight from Lizzie Kate. So, but that one was super fun. I love stitching it. It made me a little nervous trimming around the edge without any um, uh, anything to seal it or anything. I could have put some fray check or something around the edge, but since I was popping it in there and leaving it, I didn't think it probably needed to happen. So I just let it go. Then I did uh, Jelly Bean Jubilee. I think this one is Jelly Bean Garden. It's out of Jelly Bean Jubilee by With I Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. It is so dang cute. This design, every design in that book is gorgeous. I loved doing my little Lazy Daisy stitches. Um, it, just, it says Jelly Beans, but I just did a little circle finish on it and I just kind of rough cut this to cover the roughest part. These are those pom-poms from Joann's that I dyed with the uh, camel colored writ dye. And a lot of y'all were sweet enough to tell me about the lady dots, how they are, that they are different and it's made where you can cut it away. So um, if you don't have access to those, this is just the cheap white ones dropped in camel writ dye. And it worked like a charm. So I will, I am gonna try to remember to order some of those nice ones and see, because that I, that does make sense the way, because I had to do mine under the edge. Let me proceed here. See, this one has that edge on there and I just glued my edge down all the way around. But on the Lady Dots, it's made where you can cut away that piece. There's this piece here. So it's made different. So, um, that would have been a lot, it made me nervous to glue this down first and then worry about putting this guy on top because I was thinking if I'm out or in too far, I'm not gonna be able to hide it or correct it or whatever. Um, I got lucky and it worked out pretty good, but it did make me crazy nervous. So it worked though. And I love that little guy. He's sitting right back here. And he's so cute. So that was number two FFO. Number three FFO was the Holy Moly. Because I had this one that I had not done and I needed to do. The Autumn ABCs by Little House Needleworks. I love these designs. I love them. They're beautiful. They're fabulous and fantastic. And I did change my colors up. I'm not sure what video it is that I talk about it. I'm making flip back through here and find it while we're talking. Um, it's Valentine's. Welcome, Autumn. Let's see. 
So I did change my colors up and I'm gonna see if I see where, but probably won't. Whoops. So did I finish this one first and then not, not um, Summer ABCs by Little House, so no, it must be past here. Because I did stitch them all, but I didn't get it FFO'd in time. And it has been sitting there staring at me because, well, I didn't want to FFO it. <laughs> because it's hard. Okay, Autumn ABCs, here we are on this one. So Autumn ABCs is a whip back here. Autumn ABCs. Here we go, still looking. Autumn ABCs. There is a great joy to having this as a note to myself. Lord have mercy, did I not make my notes in here? Well, I finished stitching it in floss tube 47. So I probably talked about what colors I used. I know <clears throat> that he's wearing a white shirt and I've already passed on the pattern. So I know he's wearing a white shirt in the picture and um, I'm not sure if anything else I changed except I know I changed that. To, I don't know if that's, I don't know what word that is, but I probably talk about it in floss tube 47, if that helps anybody. I hate FFOing these though. They're so hard. And I do use um, foam core board instead of mat board. So I can kind of pin them in place while I'm trying to glue it. And I didn't FFO the back. Um, I used to cover my back, some people don't. So you could see, I just have folded it behind here all the way down. And it is not perfectly centered. Nope, it ain't. But I don't care, I can't, this is more than my brain likes to deal with. It's a lot. And my brain, um, I'm like, oh, when I'm trying to get these done. Cause you're, it's just so much, so much length to try to keep in place while you're trying to not pull it too hard, but pull it hard enough and it's a thing. So I got it done though. And now all of my ABCs for Little House Needleworks are done and I love them. I think these are fabulous designs. Um, I encourage everyone to fix to do them, they're just so pretty. You could go have you one frame made and just pop them in and out of it also. And so you could go and just have them, put it on foam core and just tell them, hey, I'm having this one frame made, but I need to, I'm gonna bring you four more pieces, three more pieces besides this one that I'm just gonna pull these in and out of. And I'm sure they would at your framer. I'm sure they would do it, but it's a beautiful design. So cute. It is so cute. I had a lot of fun stitching it. I didn't have a lot of fun FFOing it, <laughs> but I got it done. It's just, it's a lot to keep a hold of and keep track of and all. So that's the reason I only did four. But I had to get this one finished because y'all know I've been waiting to get it finished. And um, this is Friends of the Family You Choose. And this is my little green box. And I just uh, watered down some green acrylic paint and put it on there. And this is for my friend Sue. Susan will get this and I have, yes, her birthday was in April. Yes, it was. Yes, She knows me. But I wanted uh, something a little bit bright behind here. So I put this edge on there and then it looked kind of drab. So then I went and Teresa had sent me this piece of fabric um, back at the beginning of the lockdown. And so here it is back here brightening up behind this brown. So it just gives a little peek out of more color. And then I had these buttons in my button jar and I put them on there. And um, she loves Gerber daisies. Sue loves Gerber daisies. And so, you know, the bright pink and the bright orange and all this, 
And so that's the reason I did, when I charted it, I charted it with red and green and then yellow centers. But when I thought of, when I started to stitch it, I thought, oh no, I'm gonna do this kind of, and I think it is, it's one of my Wicked Stepmother colors. Well, back in April when I stitched it, I'm sure I tell what color it is. Mm. But I finally got it FFO'd. And we talked about putting it on the inside, <clears throat> but once I measured it, it wouldn't go here. I was gonna put it here, and then like I said, it wouldn't get all dirty, and you could leave it propped open and put fun stuff in here. But it wouldn't fit, it was a little bit too wide, it was just barely too wide this way to go in there good. It was, I was afraid it was gonna bow it up. So it didn't happen. So it just went on top instead, but I got it done and I am so happy. So those are my four FFOs. So I had a new start and my whips and my four FFOs this week. So I'm gonna count that as a win. The only haul that I got, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is what I used around the edge of this guy and of this. This is this. I got it at Joann's here in town. It's just kind of some kind of a yarn type stuff. I don't know what it is. I don't knit. Burnett. Or crochet. I mean, I can barely crochet. I'm not very good. Burnett Pipsqueak. Is it Burnett? 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 I don't know. It says Pipsqueak. And I don't know if it has a color name. It says chocolate. But it was, I don't know, $5 or something. And you got more than I could ever use in my lifetime uh, for trim. So I have lots of trim. Lots of this brown trim right here. So... I was just looking for something to put around the edge and I saw this, uh, mom and I were wandering around in there and we found, I saw this and we decided that we'd give it a go. So that is what that trim is before I forget to say that. Um, but my, I did get my Just Cross Stitch magazine. This is my haul this week. It came in the mail. I'm supposed to cover that up, I know. Just Cross Stitch, this is beautiful on the front. Oh, that's so pretty. I do love the way that when they do the back, they have all the little designs in here. And they have this adorable little sampler in here this time. They've got ornaments in here going. They've got summer stitches. Look at that little boat. This this like horizon with a in the lake. This is another section to that Quaker uh, stitch along they've been doing. And then they have this specialty stitch one, which I intended to do and didn't. Um, they have this banner, which is really cute. But this guy here, number 24, he's fun. He is so fun. And then the barn here, I mean, they're just all kinds of cute things. But this one, I may kit this up. Mama's been wanting to try to stitch and she's, I bought her a million things and she then doesn't. But this is a small little thing. I'm gonna see if I can find a better picture of it. Um, and I may put it together and see if she can manage that one. It's made to go in a little tray, but she could just stitch it. But it's called Ladybug Ladybug, and it's really cute and cheery. And so I may put that together and see if she can, um, if I get her going, if she can get, I don't think she'll be able to, but um, it can't hurt. Um, because she's been talking about wanting to stitch some more lately again. So, we'll see. Then, oh, I'm stretching y'all, sorry. Everything's short on the table. Um, a couple of y'all said about these Dollar Tree boxes. Angela, this week and last week, um, Obrag One was saying about these. This is not exactly the same as this box. See, it's taller. So I don't know that your fabric would go far enough, 
But I know everybody's having a hard time finding these boxes. Kim is trying to get some more at um, the Stitch Niche in Arlington, my LNS. She's trying to get some more of them. But these are taller, okay? So here you go. Like this. You could try to cut the top off. Or you could put a piece of ribbon. If you didn't have enough to make it to the top and the bottom, you could put a piece of ribbon around the top to finish your, you know, your size to make it be long enough. Does that make any sense? So you could put a little piece of ribbon around here and then you would have your alphabets underneath, a little piece of solid color. You could even put some lace on top of it to look like scallops on a birthday cake. And then put your dots on there and everything just regular. So if you have this and you haven't been able to find the box, these are at Dollar Tree and it was a dollar. I'm sure you could probably order it offline. But it is a little taller. I'll hold it up there a second if y'all want to try to write the number down. Um, but it, it would work. I mean, I was in a panic. I ordered it in a set of three and the other two are really big. It was like $20 for the set, but the other two are big ones and I can use them for something else. So I went ahead and did it, but it was the right size in there. I ordered it off Amazon. I was just Googling any way I could to try to find something that had the one that was the right size. And I did find it there, but this one, if you're in a pinch, that would work. So thank y'all for that. And then, um, I got, Vicki sent me something and sent me these cute little charms. These are so cute. Thank you, Vicki. And I had not, she said she went back and added them. And that's what I'm gonna do. These are so cute. So the back of little pillows or anything I made in 2020, she sent me 2020s and 2021s. And they're adorable. Look at these. So if you don't like back stitch in the year or anything, these are the cutest little things. You could just put this on there. So just put your initials in. If you don't like one over one or back stitching, and then you can just put that on any of the little pillows or anything. So it's so cute. So thank you so much, Vicki. I appreciate it. Um, she sent this beautiful card. I'm gonna show you this card. Yeah. I'm doing everything backwards. I'm like a kid. I'm showing the present first. It's a beautiful card she sent me with a beautiful note inside. So thank you so much. And then I had ordered, I told y'all I ordered these from Allison. And I wanted to leave them on this week. Y'all, these have had, I put them on, what, Thursday? So yesterday was a week ago. And I have dug in the garden every day. I've swam every day. I got pink dye on this one. And I took it off with a magic eraser. This one here, I got pink dial over it when we were making cards this week. <sighs> it was card making night on Tuesday. So um, I'm staying over here on Tuesday. And then um, Tuesday night, we went over there. We ate with Susan and Patty and them. And then um, we went over there to make cards. And I got, because I'm a messy worker, I got pink dye pink ink all over this and y'all it just kind of used my magic eraser when I got home and it took it right off so but she said I see you love the animal prints and I said yes I do and she sent me these I've got this all going backward here she sent me these and these are so fun and these these my little uh, sticker like like uh, stickery things and they are so cute and I hid them from the girls because I was gonna use them in my journal, myself, my own journal. She sent me a beautiful little note and some more of these things. If you don't have any of these things, y'all, these are fabulous. You put the nail polish remover on and then you clamp them on your fingers and they help break it down and then, then when you go to rub it off, it just comes right off. But she said she saw that I like the animals and so she sent me these to mix around. So I had used and I used just half of the pack on these. So, but she sent me all these. And I'm gonna hold this so 
Here she is. You can look at this. Is that going to focus? Focus. No Fail Nails by Allison on Facebook. And I love these things. And so she sent me all of these because she saw that I love the animals. So she sent me these and, and I'm going to put these on top because they're the coolest thing. So she had these animal prints, but these are clear. So you can put them on over anything. How cool is that? So I didn't even know there was clear ones and all these little fun extras because that's what I do. Um, I use my little, these are little like sample -y things, but whenever I use my half a one, I take and seal it back up. So she sent me these and then I ordered, I think I showed y'all I ordered these, these sets. And so this one is the one I'll, this one is the next one I'll use. It's called All Wild Up. So cute. These are so cute. And I have so much fun with them. And the little, I can use the little pieces on the girls. Um, you can just cut a little piece of it off and use on theirs. And then I don't have to worry about them getting um, no polish on everything in the world. So thank you, Allison, so much. I have a lot of fun with these. Um, nails. Now, oh, now see, I'm going all backwards. So now, um, we're going to go back around to my questions and everything. Um, I showed Barbara's, uh, Sal with the Raspberry Stitcher and she was telling me that the Lady Who Dots Creates Pom Poms are different. And Allison and has got her Quaker Pumpkin. And so we need to think up a Sal name for the Quaker Pumpkin Sal because there are a couple of us that are gonna do that. And I am loving it so much. Um, and Jane uh, is here and she's gathering names of Texas Stitchers. She's been trying to watch, she's um, trying, so she's trying to gather names of Texas Stitchers and things. And uh, she said we should do a Texas Sal. That would be fun. You know, I'm like all Texans, I am a I'm, I'm a Texan. I mean, I don't know if, I, they say that Texas is the most arrogant state about being where they're from. I don't know if that's true, but um, a friend pointed out to me that somebody asked where I'm from when we're somewhere else. So like if we're out of the country, if somebody asks where we're from, I say, I'm, I say Texas. I don't, <laughs> I don't say America, so I don't know. So. Maybe it's true, maybe it's true. So yes, I think that would be fun and I will try to uh, think of something like that because I love that idea. But of course, anybody else could stitch on it too. Um, Elizabeth is looking for um, a German Shepherd name and she they're getting a, a show, German Shepherd, not a work line, they're getting a show one. And um, we had, I've told you before, we had, um, we had German Shepherds growing up. Um, I had the one, they got when I was little. We got it, I believe, before my sister was even born. And um, we lost him when I was in high school. And I missed three days of school. I was ruined. Um, his name was Rebel. Um, he could be very naughty sometimes. <laughs> so, um, but he wasn't um, ever aggressive or anything like that. He was just a uh, little rambunctious. But um, we had another one after... Uh, my parents divorced, my daddy got one, and at, for some reason, he had a beautiful name picked out for it, but it ended up being called Big Dog. It was Big Dog, that was its name. Hello, Big Dog, hey, Big Dog. I don't know how these things happen. They do. Um, but my aunt and uncle had one. They had a white one, which we always called a white German Shepherd. I don't know if it was, but um, its name was Hondo which was fun, fabulous name. And then, let me see, I got it wrote down here. I just saw it, y'all. Holy moly. Shelly. Shelly um, had, they had, her cousin lived in Kenai, Alaska. We talked about Kenai and that being a fabulous word. And he, they lived there, and they had a dog named Kenai. 
So Lisbeth, that is also would be a beautiful name for your dog, Kenai, K-E-N-A-I, like Kenai, Alaska. So I love that too. So congratulations on your German Shepherd because they are fabulous. Um, Helen said she watched on Friday night and was gonna comment on Saturday and then forgot and I am got you 100% on that because I do it all the time. I'm the worst. I am the worst. Because I watch on the TV and I can thumbs up on the TV, which I do try to remember to always while I'm there, but I can't, I don't like trying. I mean, I guess I'm sure you could somehow use your little thingy, you know, to go back and forth and comment. But I then sometimes forget to go back and comment. I try to stop right then and grab my phone and comment so I don't forget because yes, it is the worst thing. I think some people probably maybe have it hooked up to the, to like a keyboard, in which case that would be genius and so much easier. But I, that would be something else that would, I would have to think about how to turn the TV off and on. And that would probably not work for me. So Helen, I'm feeling you about forgetting to comment. Patty Penn finished Let Freedom Ring and I can't remember, I can't wait to see it. She says she sent it off to the framer and um, you know, we may have to have a charity event because that is a big, <laughs> that is a really big piece. So that's gonna be a really big frame. So yeah, um, yike. But I cannot wait to see it. I can't believe you already got it finished. That's crazy. And she said when they lived here that her Huskies would eat the June bugs because I hate June bugs, I really do. And they do. Dogs, for whatever reason, will try to catch them and eat them. And then, the, oh, it's so disgusting. Daddy and them's little schnauzer will do grasshoppers that way. You'll hear Annie getting on to him when we're all outside and he'll be getting in trouble because he's trying to catch grasshopper and eat it. I don't know why they're gross. It's so gross. And they then they're, uh, then they smell. There's Those things have a smell. I don't know how people eat them. I mean, I understand they're hungry, okay? But I'm weird about the way things smell. If they smell weird, I don't, I don't want to eat it. I don't like weird smells. And then the dog, its whole face will smell and it has a weird bug smell. I don't know what else to call it, but it's so disgusting. Oh, it's awful. It's like when we get this swarms of crickets here and the, if you, and, and the stores will spray something outside to kill them. And then they'll just be all up against the wall before they come out and get them cleaned up every day. And they'll be stinking. Oh Lord, mm -mm. no, no. So yeah, Patty Pan, them dogs eating them bugs is too much. Vicky said that yes, I should put my little quilt out and that she used to buy lots of them in the 80s and 90s when shops and things were buying them up and cutting them up and making little toys out of them. And I remember that when you said that, they would have little teddy bears and ducks and all this cut out of old quilts. I remember that when you said that and I had forgotten all about that, which they did look beautiful. I have one in here that is a wreck that daddy had at deer camp forever and um, it's worn all to pieces and all, but I intend to make, um, I mean, it literally has big holes in it and everything, but it's made by granny who made this one and I'm going to use it. And if I can ever figure out how to sew that good, I'm gonna make a Santa suit for a Santa doll out of it, and I think I'll love it. So, and of course, I always think I'll make ones for some of my other cousins, but I probably won't because, you know, I probably will never get skilled enough to make myself one, but I have the intent. There you go. Rita said she loved the Pearl, watching the Porter Wagner show. I love Porter Wagner. We would watch Porter Wagner with good old girl and papa, and you know, he had, and I swear, and I don't know why if this was true, but this is what my brain remembers. He had his suit and it would have all those flyers and everything with the sequins all around it. And I, when you said this, this brought this whole thing back, Rita. Good old girl would buy washing powders and inside the washing powder box would be little hand towels in there. And they would have irises and different kinds of flyers on there. And in my brain,
Y'all, I don't know what that sound is outside my house. We may finna get interrupted. I don't know. Um, Y'all hear that? Good grief. Maybe somebody's working out in the street. I don't know. In my brain, they cut around those and put them on Porter Wagner's clothes. On his suits with the sequins all around them then and everything. So somebody, if y'all remember that and that's true, chime in. Because if not, that was something that my poor little crazy child brain thought. I really thought that. And I, I thought I loved watching him with his pompadour. And, of course, he would be on there with Dolly Parton and Bill Monroe would be on there sometimes. It's the printer in there going crazy. Lord, I hope James Williams ain't trying to send me a message since I have the white, the, my phone on shut up telling me to seek shelter or something. Oh, well, I'm going to spend my last few minutes with y'all. That's a nice thing. But in my brain, that's what those... And maybe he did commercials or promotional things for those for that washing powder. And then the hand towels were in there. And then them being on his clothes was part of it made it look beautiful. I don't know. I don't remember. But when you said that, that whole thing came flooding back to me. But you saw when Bill, Bill Monroe would be on there. And, um, and yes, Marty Stewart was his mandolin player way on back in the day. And... I don't know if there has ever been a more, he, Marty Stewart is a beautiful human being to this very day. He is a beautiful human. He has fabulous hair and fabulous face and fabulous skin. Yes. So I can definitely understand being in love with Marty Stewart because yes, he was devilishly handsome. So handsome. And of course, you know, who could resist a Madeline or a Dulcimer? Not me. I love it. So thank you for bringing all that back to my brain. And if any of y'all else remember that, let me know. Because I don't know. Judith, congratulations on being out of school. All the teachers and school staff, enjoy y'all summer. Y'all earned it this year more than ever. You earn it every year. But this year, holy moly. And Dallas and Fort Worth only got out, I think, uh, today or yesterday was their last day of school. They went long. So I can't. Imagine they're poor teachers. That's too much. And Adrian, I will keep an eye out for Noah and Co. too. Everybody, um, Adrian is looking for the Noah and Co. by Heartstrings that I'm stitching on this guy here. So if anybody sees it, holler. If not, um, we will have to just share this guy around because he's out of print and um, that's what we'll do. Just share him around and I'll try to put a note. I'm trying to make myself a note to put a sticky on here. And we'll just send him around um, next because he's not available anywhere. Um, Frankie said she did the dip nails and um, I have a dip nail kit that I tried during the lockdown. My thing with the dip nail is the same thing with the gel nail. I cannot get the gel nail why is that a tongue twister? Gel nails. Dip nails isn't, but gel nails is so hard to say and it goes straight up my nose when I try to say it. But getting it off freaks me out. It freaks me out so bad um, when it doesn't want to come off and you have to scrape at it a little bit, even when they do it there. And the last time that lady did mine all with a nail file, and I swear she destroyed my nails. They are just, she took them down to nothing, I guess. It was so weird. But that is the part, I love that it stays on, and I love that it's strong and all that. But the getting it off of there, if you could never take it off and they would just, you know, you could add to or whatever, but no. That's the thing that freaks me out about it is trying to get it off is too much for me. And I can't with, uh, and I'm weird. I don't like this. I tell you all the time, getting a pedicure is not an enjoyable thing for me. It's high stress. It's high stress. There ain't enough mimosas in the world to make that an okay thing for me. So uh, let me know if you do the dip 
nail thing and you're able to get it off easily because I wasn't, Micah says she makes them heat the nail remover up or something and that makes it come off and I'm like, my Lord, I don't, I don't even know about that. That's too much. Um, and Kathy did also let me know, um, like Barbara, that the Lady Dots pom-poms are made to come apart. So somehow they're made completely different than the little cheap ones I got at Joann's. They're made to come apart so that you can glue them on things and not have to stick it under. So thank you. I will, I'm going to have to try to see about getting some of those. Teresa, we were talking about the nasty old grasshoppers. She said, which I didn't know this, and we have live in Grasshopper Central down here, I swear. Um, I'll never forget the year we had them so bad. And the bug man would come, the exterminator would come spray outside. And then my sister had bug spray that she would, she would always be spraying this bug spray trying to keep these. And she had chickens running the yard and everything. Still, the grasshoppers everywhere, right? And Sage and Campbell, when she was little and she'd get mad at you that year, when you'd spray that spray, you know, it would kill them bugs. And so she'd get mad at you. She would go, shh, 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 shh. She was spraying you with the bug spray to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> when she didn't like you. That's the kind of ornery family I come from. Even as a toddler, if you don't agree with us, we're just ch -ch -ch key with a spray. <laughs> so I loved, but she said, if you will sprinkle flour on your plants, that the grasshoppers will eat it and then die. And so I'm going to try that because they're not bad here this year because we've had so much water. They, um, they don't do well when it's wet. And so that's why the years you're in drought, so that you have the grasshoppers so much worse because the mold and um, stuff is what is hard on them. So, but I'm gonna try the flower because we've seen a couple and I love when the, when I'm in the pool and the, the mockingbird catches one. I'm like, yes, go mockingbird. I hate to be terrible about it, but. And um, Judy, I will be praying for your husband and y'all, um, he has been, diagnosed the same thing my uncle they said his was actually my husband's is my uncle's is right at the top of his stomach at the bottom of his esophagus her husband's is right at the top of his stomach and he's super fit and um they just had no clue so he started treatment and I will be praying for him and y'all because it's hard it is so hard I think he's done three uh, four of his chemos and then you know they'll have radiation and surgery but I am so sorry but she did say there is a large um, Hobby Lobby has a really big hinged lidded toolbox so I'll have to swing through there and also see if I can get a eye on that thing um Carolyn, thank you for watching and keeping up and trying to get caught back up. I'm always in the same boat. I'm trying to watch. And then like this week, I didn't get hardly no stitching watching time. And so it goes, when I have those weeks that I get no stitching watching time, there you go. Um, I get, especially my floss tube time gets cut back. Then I have to play the catch up game. So thank you. And I'm in the same boat, always trying to catch up. <clears throat> Sharon, good grief. I thought I sent that thing, and I know when you when I saw your message, because I was going to email it. Part of my brain knows I didn't, and I am so sorry. So I will email that to you. Oh my gosh! Uh, I am the world's worst if about doing. If I can do things all one way, I do really. If I can't, then it just gets. So Sharon, I'm so sorry, and I will get that on its way. Um, Zan says the cicadas in uh, the cicadas, and she's crazy band lady stitches on YouTube are horrible in Cincinnati right now, and we call them locusts down here. I'm not sure why, because we know it's not a locust, but we call them locusts. I don't know. That's just what we do, and we would get the little shells and play with the little shells like cows and things. And then we would put a string on, you put a string around the locust just like you can a bee and play with it, you know, like this, because they'll fly a little bit. Well, we put a little string on them and make little fences for them and stuff and put them in there. Life as a locust ain't easy. But um, 
there were so many of them as kids, we'd gather up all them chameleon of shells. Some years, you know, you'd have so many more than others, but yes, we played with those things. Uh, Tammy said, um, the Needlework Galleria in September is in Missouri. And I glanced at it this morning. I would love to see something about that. Um, and these are things that I need to make myself another note about. I would love to go to that. Um, I don't think I have anything pressing coming up in September. Um, so yes, thank you for letting me know about that and I will look into that. Um, uh, Lisa, I am still thinking about you and your husband. Her husband has dementia and I am still thinking about y'all. It is the worst, the hardest thing. Micah did send me a study today saying that they're thinking it may have the plaques that build up, those amyloid plaques, maybe um, from different like metals and things, copper and things like this that aren't doing what they should. And then they get on there and build up these plaques. So um, I loved that that gave me some, that they're, that they're finding maybe this is this, maybe, because the more, you know, it, sometimes it's just that one little thing that they find and they realize, oh, and that can make such a difference. So that made me super happy. Jolie, yes, face, floss tube friends are for real. And um, Jerlyn sent that pattern and it is so cute. Floss tube friends are for real. Those are real friends. And sometimes, especially this last little bit of time, that's all we've had from time to time. Um, and Kat Roberts, the Artful Tart, she lived in Happy, Texas. I loved that. I'm happy. I love them. If you live in Happy, Texas, I mean, dang, that's the best. And, but she said for the first to the fourth grade, it was a 20-minute bus ride to school. 20 mile, I'm sorry, 20-mile bus ride to school. And we were the same way. It was about 20 miles for us to get to school on the bus. And, um, boy, it was a heck of a clip. And we were first ones... Um, Depending on where you live, you know, if you're the first ones on, you're the last ones off and like this. So we were the first ones off and the last ones on if my brain is working right. So we um, at least ended up in the good section because some of the kids, the loop went the other direction from where we got on and off. So, oh, Lord. Um, Elizabeth, I hope you're finishing. Uh, happy birthday, America went good. Um... I thought, I just followed my directions. It went really easy. So holler if you have any trouble, but I was so afraid to start it, but it went great. Kathy said she couldn't find, and I'm going to hold it up again, Creative Keeps Studio on Etsy. And I typed it in just like that, and I found it, Creative Keeps Studio. It says she's on a break. And so um, I messaged her this morning to see if everything's okay. This is such a beautiful thing, but of course, leave it to me. I get things all messed up in my brain. For some reason, I guess maybe because I make my husband do things. I don't know. I thought that Sherry at Creative Keeps Studio had her husband making them. <laughs> That's not how that went. This is... Gosh, my terrible writing. The person in Kentucky that makes them, and I'll write it again, and they're on Instagram. You were looking for um, a Kentucky connection. Kathy, I think you were looking for a And there is an S in there. R and R Woodworkings. Is that gonna focus? R and R Woodworkings with an S K Y for Kentucky is the Kentucky place that makes them rich and is the one that hurt his hand last week. I thought that was Sherry's husband. It is not. Rich has a 